before this recent shooting incident in Orlando, which remains murky, you said that the FBI admitted he wasn't armed. That's one story. Another version is, oh, he was uh, had attacked an agent with a knife. And yet another one says he was brandishing a pole. All these are sort of cited to anonymous law enforcement officials, so who knows what happened in that room at this stage. But well before that incident, I had been looking into uh, FBI shooting incidents over many years. And in fact, we fought a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit to obtain uh, the internal records of FBI shooting reviews, every time an agent pulls a trigger, uh, they, they conduct an internal review of that incident for all deliberate shootings dating back to 1993. And of course, now it was suddenly very timely because the FBI had just uh, shot this man under very murky circumstances and is typically the case when the FBI kills someone or shoots someone. Local homicide detectives, in this case the Orlando Police Department, are not conducting an independent investigation to try to figure out what happened. They defer to the Federal uh, Bureau of Investigation to investigate itself. And what this enormous pile of documents that we eventually obtained, uh, all shooting, deliberate shooting incidents going back to 1993, showed was that in every instance in that 20-year span, so pr presumably for some time beyond that, but that's all we have, where an FBI bullet hit somebody uh, and either killed them or wounded them uh, f that was deliberately fired, the agency uh, cleared the uh, agent of any wrongdoing, found that it, it was a, a justified shoot, a good shoot in agents' parlance. There were five supposed, uh, what they would call bad shoots, where agents did get letters of censure uh, for doing things like firing a warning shot above a crowd. Uh, n none of those incidents, though, involved anyone getting hit by a bullet. Uh, Charlie Savage, you quote uh, Professor Samuel Walker, who teaches criminal justice, about uh, the problem with this. Yes, he, this is a professor who studies internal law enforcement uh, investigations, and he said that this very low rate of finding bad shoots, basically zero, when, the, when someone was actually hurt, uh, or an animal, for, for that matter, a, su a subset of these are shooting, you know, dogs that were menacing while serving an arrest warrant or something, uh, was suspiciously low, in his words. But, of course, we, you don't know that it means that, in fact, something uh, was wrong. Uh, it's just suspiciously low. And one of, the, one of the problems in evaluating this document set, and this is over 2,000 pages of documents, is because, as I mentioned earlier, there's very often, overwhelmingly often, with a very few exceptions, no independently produced investigative report by some other authority where you could put the two reports side by side and see, is this an accurate portrayal of what happened or not? And, you know, there's good reason to believe that the FBI would have a generally low rate of bad shootings, because unlike a uh, city police force, FBI agents tend to be older, better trained, more experienced, and perhaps most importantly, they're not patrolling the streets and responding to in-progress crimes and chaotic situations. When they go into sort of uh, arresting people and so forth, that tends to be pre-planned uh, operations where they go in with overwhelming force, and that's going to minimize chaos. And yet, they still uh, killed or wounded 150 people over 20 years, and it's kind of remarkable that not once in all that time, uh, even in an incident where the uh, Bureau ended up paying over a million dollars to someone who was uh, shot by an agent, uh, did they find internally that that was uh, not a justified shooting. Charlie Savage, you referred uh, in this piece to the settlement of a million dollars of a man shot in 2002. Can you describe that case? Yes. And let me first preface this by saying why this is a case worth looking at. It's not that this case is particularly, you know, uh, different than others, although there are some oddities about it, but for and it's over a decade old. But what's interesting about it is it's a rare exception to the rule that there's nothing to look at but the FBI's own narrative of what happened. In this case, there was an independent investigation by a local police detective with the Anne Arundel County uh, Police, 
and there was a lawsuit that led to discovery uh, before it was finally settled, and there were some additional investigations that were conducted as part of that litigation. And so there was a lot of alternative information to put alongside the FBI's own version of events to see at least whether they dovetailed or there were some discrepancies, and there were discrepancies. So this was a bizarre case. Uh, the FBI was looking for a bank robbery suspect that they thought was going to be coming be by a convenience store in a white baseball cap in a car driven by his sister. And unfortunately, another man fitting that description, who was innocent, uh, Joseph uh, Schultz, uh, came by in a white baseball cap in a car driven by his girlfriend. And so the FBI thought he was the, the bank robbery suspect and chased the car down, turned on the sirens, swarmed around it, forced it over, uh, surrounded it with guns, and a, a, just a moment later shot uh, uh, Mr. Schultz, uh, one, an agent shot Mr. Schultz in the face. And uh, he luck miraculously survived. The bullet deflected off of a piece of metal on the uh, clip that holds the seat belt, and so it sort of uh, hit his jaw rather than his head. But he un underwent facial reconstruction surgery, and the FBI eventually paid $1.3 million, or I guess I should say taxpayers paid $1.3 million to him to settle that uh, lawsuit. And yet, internally, the FBI deemed this to have been a good shoot. And the internal report shows actually that one member of the panel that was looking at this actually didn't think so, but he was outvoted by uh, the rest of them, who said that the totality of circumstances surrounding this incident, including that it was a high-risk stop, showed uh, that it was they could not fault the agent for pulling the trigger. But when you look at the FBI narrative that was submitted to that panel for review, and then you put it alongside these alternatives, you see that in a series of small but important ways, the narrative omitted information or uh, exaggerated information in a way that made it much more sympathetic to the agent who uh, pulled the trigger. Uh, than these alternative reports, including the one by this police detective, uh, who is a neutral party, obviously, uh, uh, looked like. So, for example, the FBI report spends a full page describing what happened after they turned on the siren and the lights until they finally pulled over the car. They made it sound like it was a very extended chase. They talk about how the car rapidly accelerated, and the FBI agents had to pull up alongside it and shouted over and over and over again, pull over. Uh, and finally brought it to rest maybe 100 yards away, uh, approximately 100 yards away. That was a quote. And then when you look at the alternative reports, though, first of all, the uh, a forensic crash reconstruction specialist said that the car could have been going no more than 12 miles an hour. The uh, police detective noted that it was in, in a merge lane, so it would have had to accelerate a little bit. And an internal sketch created by the FBI, but not included in this narrative, put the car stopped just 142 feet from the intersection, not 100 yards, so less than half the distance. And so it is, So the FBI's report created this sense of, a, a, of quite a chase that would have made it more reasonable to assume that the person in the car was a desperate and dangerous person. And an, another example is the FBI's report that was sent to this review group did not contain a, anything from the statement by the victim, and it did not flag that a crucial fact was uh, in dispute. The crucial fact was, how did this guy move before the agent shot him? In the FBI's report, it says that the agent who shot him said, show me your hands. Instead, he moved. In fact, he moved down and to his left. And so he thought he was reaching for a gun or something and shot him to eliminate the threat to himself and the fellow law enforcement officials. And that is what that guy uh, said, that agent. But the uh, the victim said, no, he had been moving to the right because another agent was simultaneously shouting, open the door, and he was listening to that agent. And so, you know, w what is true is not knowable, but the fact that this was a disputed fact is relevant. And yet that was not put in the FBI's narrative and only came out because of these alternative investigations, which the review panel, which deemed this to be a good shoot, did not see. So, and so Joseph that, Schultz you know, said that he was responding to another I mean, officer telling him to open the door, is that right? That's right. So he said, the guy was saying, open the door, so I was reaching to my right to open the door, as opposed to the agent who shot him, who said he saw him reaching down and to the left. Again, not knowable uh, at this stage which of those two accounts is true, but the relevant issue is the FBI's internal review panel that would deem this a good shoot 
uh, didn't have that information in front of them in the narrative, at least, that was prepared by the shooting incident review team. Now, again, this is more than a decade ago. This is one incident, and it's not knowable, to me at least, at this stage, whether this is an aberration or is this something that happened more often, because the overwhelming majority of the time, there is no alternative investigation. Uh, there is no lawsuit that doesn't get dismissed right away by a judge for, you know, a, a, a motion for summary judgment without reaching the stage of discovery and, and having this kind of evidence uh, collected. And of course, most of the time, the people who are being shot are, in fact, criminal suspects. They are the people that were, you know, the drug dealer or whoever who was going to go uh, and be arrested. And, and, and so the there's not a lot of sort of public sympathy, I think, or interest in the judiciary uh, in looking at those cases. The oddness of this one particular case where there was a totally innocent victim overcame those, th those, those hurdles, uh, convinced the Anne Arundel Police Department that they wanted to do their own investigation, convinced the judge to let it, and the courts to let it get to discovery, and that's how we know uh, that in this case uh, something was odd. Uh, Charlie Savage, you said you got over 2,100 pages from the FBI. Um, did you uncover any information about the killing of Filiberto Ojeda Rios, the 72-year-old Puerto Rican independence activist who was shot dead by the FBI in 2005? And according to an autopsy, he bled to death after being hit with a single bullet. Officials didn't enter his home until the following day, many hours after he was shot. He was wanted by the FBI for his role in a 1983 bank. Heist. Did you see anything about him? You know, I did not uh, look carefully at that case. I'm not sure if that's in this segment of documents or not. I've put them all up on the uh, our Times website, and I invite any viewers who know anything about uh, particular incidents going back to 1993 to go look at that and see if they think that the FBI's internal narrative matches their understanding of what happened. There are a handful of uh, incidents that did not go through this process. The, the Justice Department's attorney, uh, in, sorry, Inspector General, has the right to take away a shooting incident investigation from the FBI at the onset. And there was one from Puerto Rico. I'm not sure if that was the one or if it involved a police officer who was shot from, the, from about five or six years ago that wasn't in this document set because the IG had done his own report, which is on their website as well. Well, we did a uh, search of your of the documents you put online, and this is not in that, those that more than 2,100 pages. Because the IG had pulled it out for their own, one, uh, hmm. their own look. 